Hey, I'm Caleb with You Can Make This Too. Thank you for joining me today. We're gonna to talk about how to make dovetails. Simply, as you notice, I have a very nice selection of tools, but I'm gonna to try to keep this to the absolute minimum and avoid using a lot of the kind of crazy stuff and just stick to basics and show you how simple it is to make dovetails. And spoiler alert, Mine are not gonna look perfect because I'm not perfect at them because the uh, more you do them, the better you get and I don't do them very often. And that's one thing I really want you to be able to take away from this is don't be afraid of making flawed dovetails because the amazing thing about dovetails is they don't have to be perfect to work great and do their job. The important thing is to just give it a try. So yeah, let's walk through just kind of the most simple, basic way to do a dovetail. Starting out, like with any joinery, we're just gonna do some marking. I have a razor knife, just a box cutter that I'll use in place of a marking knife some, and a graphing pencil. So I'm a tails first kind of guy, but it really doesn't matter if you want to do tails first or pins first. I just like to do tails first. So first thing I'm going to do is just reference off my bench here to mark the thickness of my board on the other board. Boom. Easy stuff. I'm make sure that was square and I didn't Check it up. Actually, that's that's must have been on on something. So pro tip, make sure you don't have any uh, sawdust underneath your pieces when you're doing this. Now on this, I'm going to do two tails. I'm just gonna make a mark how much I'm insetting, which I'm gonna do half inch on each side. This doesn't matter, I'm just making it up as I go. Let's find middle here. Here's the middle. Okay. So I have, I have three marks, the outside, and then a center line. I'm gonna come in from that center. Okay, now I have five lines. I've got a half inch mark in from each side, and I have a half inch space in the middle, but these are straight, so now I'm gonna make some angles on them. I'm just gonna use my uh, doohickey here. So as you can see, I have marked my waist and I now have two dovetails, tails marked and I transferred my lines across the top of the board. So now I can saw in. Now what I wanna do is every, I wanna try to keep this line. So I'm gonna try to saw right beside the line down to my baseline here. You see I have a double line because I had some junk under these boards when I first marked it. But <clears throat> one trick to help saw these is it's always easier to saw vertical than at an angle. So what I'm gonna do is angle my piece and to make sure it's vertical, I'm using the bevel gauge that I use to mark those angles to angle the wood so I know that's pretty close. And now when I saw, I don't have to worry about some crazy angle, I can try to keep this saw vertical which is just going to be easier to do. Also, because I'm doing a rip cut down into the grain, I'm using a ripping saw. And if you're not very great at sawing, uh, last week I just released a video on how to saw correctly. So you might wanna give that a check if you're not confident with your sawing skills. So I had it tipped and I did two cuts and I tipped it the other way to do the other two. They are pretty dang close, but not perfect, because I'm not perfect, and that's okay, because the other nifty thing is that these are gonna get transferred to the next board, so whatever these are, I'm gonna transform for them, so the more accurate I am there is what's actually going to count and how well they fit. Next is gonna start removing the waist, so that way all we have here are the tails, the middle will have to chisel up, the nice thing is with these ends here, we can just cut in. I don't have a line, so I need to connect my two baselines, and then I have a line I can follow to take out the waste on the outsides. And now we're cross cutting, because we're cutting across the grain, so I'll switch to a cross cut saw. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is establish a baseline. So I'll put my chisel right on the mark. Give it a little whack. I'm gonna switch to a smaller chisel that can fit between these dovetails. 
just work back and forth. You could also use a coping saw, but I'm not very good with a coping saw. Now that I'm over halfway through, I'm gonna flip it over so that way I don't blow out from the other side and I have a nice clean edge. Now, the other nice thing about doing it this way is I don't have to super stress that when I set my chisel here, that I'm perfectly vertical. What I wanna make sure is that I'm not this way because then I'll have a hump in the middle but if I actually undercut this and in cut it a little bit, the only thing that's actually visible is the outside edge, not the center. So I'll actually skew a touch on the side of undercutting some, and that's gonna be hidden. So I don't have to worry about being, being perfect. Now, while I have my chisels, I can also check my saw line. And if I see any issues with my saw line, I can just smooth those out a little bit and clean it up some. I established my baseline all the way around this guy. And now I need to transfer this to here. Easy way to do that is I'm gonna use an off cut as a depth gauge and lock this dude in my vise. I'm using this spacer block instead of setting on my bench because my bench isn't totally flat. Make sure we're lined up everywhere. And now here's where precision really counts because I'm trying to match these two surfaces. It really didn't matter that much how perfectly I followed my lines because whatever it turned out to be is what we're gonna transfer. But now I want a really clean transfer because it's what counts. So I'm gonna use my razor knife and just doo doo. As always, we're going to mark our waste so we don't remove the wrong thing. Now, we need to take these top lines and connect them down to our baseline. So, lots of, lots of just marking and copying in this process. Once again, we've got, we're sawing into the end grain, which means we're rip sawing. So we'll get the rip saw, make these four cuts, and then we can start removing the waste. So I have all the side lines cut to remove the tails to leave only the pins. Now it's time to start removing the waste. Last time I did everything by chisel. This time I'm gonna go ahead and use the coping saw. There is a good reason for this. If you notice on the pins, things are slanted. So if I just came in from one side, I would have to make sure that I came in from the narrow side and used a narrow chisel. Because if I used a wide chisel here and just kept plunging down, um, you, you can see the issue, I'd end up cutting straight walls instead of the angle. So if you wanna chisel this out, just make sure your chisel is sized for the narrow side and you can do a baseline, chop, baseline, chop, baseline, chop. But the alternative is to use a coping saw, cut out most of the waste, come in with a chisel, and then just clean it up. That's what I'm gonna do on this side. Okay, as you can see, we got most of the waste removed. First we cut the sides, then I use the coping saw to remove most of the waste. And you can probably see that that's like wonky and humpy because I didn't like super follow the line with the coping saw, which I didn't want to, made sure to stay away from it a little bit. Now we can come in with some chisels and clean that up really nice. Once again, remember that anything in here is gonna be hidden, so it's fine if we undercut. So I don't have to worry about being perfectly level. In fact, I wanna make sure I'm not tipping out. If anything, I wanna make sure I tip this way a little bit, cut in chop in a little bit from the other side. And then if this isn't perfectly flat, it's gonna be hidden. The flatter, the better. But uh, when you first start, just you know, give yourself that little bit of error. The uh, mechanical joint created by these angles is really where the strength comes from anyway. Another thing would probably use my Bridge City Toolworks, which has all these little dovetail templates, which really helps make everything be precise. And then this is handy, makes a knife edge, but I don't have as much control. These blades tend to wander. 
I'd have used my real marking knife. That helps, but all those, all those little things can help you make a much tighter, cleaner dovetail. But not everyone has that, so I don't wanna show you a whole bunch of tools to do it perfect. Um, Sure, someone much better than with me that you know hasn't waited three years since last time he made 90 degree dovetails like this could take the tools I just did and make a much tighter dovetail. But uh, that's a different guy, not me. So go make some dovetails that are a little ugly like this because you know what? This is still a pretty, pretty strong joint. Naturally, it's got some wiggle that way because it does, but you know, the strength is this way. Let's. I pull it out of the vise. Didn't hurt the joint, you know? So if you need something to hold together, this is gonna hold together. See, that was all 120 pounds of me. And there, there you go. Really didn't use too many tools, could use a lot more. You know, just a cross cut saw and a rip saw. Could have just used my Ryoba up there, which is the, the two in one speed square bevel gauge. You can get away without a bevel gauge, but I mean, really you can pick these up for like $10 almost at any hardware store or home improvement warehouse. So it's not a big deal. Use marking knife some, graphing pencil. If you've been wanting to make dovetails, but you're intimidated, don't be intimidated, don't be scared. Don't be scared to make dovetails that are a little ugly. Um, they're still still going to do the job, and you know you've got to make ugly ones in order to make pretty ones. So just go get those out of the way. Anyway, hope you learned something, were inspired, or at least entertained. And until next time, make time to make something.